as we think about parametric equations, just as a reminder of what they are, we have the x position and the y position each plotted as different functions of time, f of t and g of t. So let's look at an example where we have t squared minus 4 will be the x position in any time, and the y position will be two, uh, t over 2. So as we think about what that might look like, you could go to your graphing calculator and put your calculator into parametric mode and do everything we're going to do by hand. And I would encourage you to do that to make sure that the graphing calculator graph looks exactly like what we will do by hand. So I've built a table and we're going to start to graph what this looks like. So we've built a table. When t is negative 2, then we're going to plug a negative 2 in for both the x position and the y position. Negative 2 squared is 4 minus 4 is 0. Similarly, when I plug a negative 2 here, negative 2 over 2 is negative 1. And so the very first point that I would plot would be 0, negative 1. I'd put a dot right there. I'm going to fill out the rest of this table. You can do it yourself as well. We are just plugging in for different t values in the table and finding the appropriate value of x and y. So our second dot will be at negative 1 for time. There's no way to plot that, but we can plot a negative 3 and a negative 1 half dot right there. So as we start to see, our graph looks like this. And as we plot these graphs, we will show arrows that show the direction of their motion. Plotting more of them, you'll see the graph will look like this. And again, we need to show our direction of travel. So that would be the graph for this parametric equation. There's all kinds of things we might want to do to a graph like that. We might want to turn this into a graph that's in y equals some function of x form. And you would do that by removing the parameter. And the parameter is this value t, because at different values of t, both x and y depend on t. So if we were going to try to put this in the form y equals some function of x, then we could solve the x equation, which is equal to t squared minus 4, for t. So t squared would equal x plus 4, and t would equal plus or minus the square root of x plus 4. Now our original equation for y was t over 2. So by substituting this in for the parameter t, we would have y equals plus or minus the square root of x plus 4, all divided by 2. And that is a parabola that's on its side. It's not a function. It wouldn't pass the vertical line test. But the important thing to realize is that our parameter was only when t was between negative 2 and 3. And so I wouldn't have an arrow going forever. I would stop this at that value of t equals 3. If I wanted to include all values of time, then I would say my domain is 
less than infinity greater than negative infinity. And if that's the case, then this would go on forever, both directions. And we would have arrows like that. Now let's take a look at how we would find the slope tangent to the curve at the time t equals 1. So t equals 1 in our table are all of these values here. You can barely see them as you highlight them like that. Let's highlight them like this. Those are the values we're looking for, and that is this time on our graph right here. So we're really saying, hey, what's the slope right there? It looks like it might be about a quarter or an eighth, who knows? But we can find it by looking at dy dx and understanding that dy dx mathematically is dy dt over dx dt. If we were to do the actual division and multiply by the reciprocal, we would really have dy over dt times dt over dx you'd see that mathematically the dt's would cancel out and leave us just what we thought we should have, dy dx. So in our case, to find dy dt, we are going to take the derivative of the position function in the y direction. So this is really just y prime. In our case, it was 1 half. Similarly, we will take the derivative of x with respect to time. Well, that was... 2t. And so our answer is 1 half over 2t. And if we simplify that, we're really going to get 1 over 4t. And we're looking when t is positive 1, I'm sorry. If we're really looking at that dot, we want this value here. And so we, we do, we have 1 over 4 times 1, or 1 fourth, and that looks just like that slope right there. Another thing we might be asked is the velocity vector at that same point, t equals 1. Well, the vector suggests that we are going to have an x component and a y component. The x component is really just that change in x with time, and that y component is the change in y with time, or it's the derivative in the x and the y. And so those values that we calculated before are the same. dx tt would be 2t, dy dt would be 1 half. We would write it with these vector arrows. And plugging in t equals 1 would give us an actual vector of 2 comma 1 half. And that would mean that at that point we really have 2 meters per second that we're traveling to the right and 1 half meters per second that we're going up if in fact our position was given in meters and our time was given in seconds. We can also look at acceleration in the same way. Acceleration will be the second derivative of the position in the x and the second derivative of the position in the y with respect to time. And so since we have kept our velocity vector, our acceleration vector will be 2 comma zero. We're not accelerating vertically at all, but we are accelerating horizontally at a constant rate of two. Another popular question related to parametrics is what is the direction of motion? And so in this case, I can see just from my blue arrow from my tangent line that I am up and right. But another way to see this is going back and looking at our velocity vector. If we looked at that velocity vector, 
we had 2t comma 1 half. And that, could, that told us right there, because this was positive x rate, then the movement is to the right, and the movement is up. I'm going to put another velocity vector here. If I had had a velocity vector like this, negative 2t, comma, um, 3t squared, and I was looking at t equals negative 2, we would have to determine what kind of values we had here. Here we'd have negative 2 times a negative 2. Well, that would be positive 4. Let's just say that this was negative 3t squared for the y rate, the y component of the velocity, if you will. Then we would have negative 3 times negative 2 squared. Well, that would give us positive 4 times negative 3 is negative 12. For this vector, it would mean we would be moving to the right and down. And so we would really have a tangent line going like that. That would be our direction of motion. All from the velocity vector, we wouldn't have to have had a picture of our path of motion, which sometimes can be hard to create. Another popular question relative to parametrics is what is the speed at a particular time? Well, the speed, when we think about this, we are moving in the x direction at a vector of 2t and in the y direction, a vector of 1 half. And we said we were looking at t equals 1. So when I plug a 1 in here, this vector really does become just 2. And so the speed is the length of the resultant vector. As you can see, this is really just the Pythagorean theorem. In this case, our speed would be the square root of, when I plug a 1 in here, I have 2. 2 squared plus 1 half squared. So we'd have 4. 1 half squared is a quarter. So we'd have 4 and a quarter, the square root of that. Hopefully you can see, because we are squaring both components, our speed will always be positive. And if we were going to do this more generally for any case, what we're doing to find speed is we're taking the square root of the rate of change of the position in the x squared, or the x component of the velocity squared, plus the y component of the velocity squared. That will always give you speed. Another popular question is distance. How far might the object travel over this interval? So we're really saying, hey, if we were going to go from here all the way to there, how far would that be in some measure of length? And so the length is the integral. We are going to sum up all of these individual speed vectors, speed lengths. So we are going to sum up the integral, in our case from negative 2 to 3, the rate in the x squared plus the rate in the y squared dt. And so in our case, dx dt we found is 2t, and dy dt was always that one half. I did this integral on my calculator using math nine, and I would encourage you to do the same. You should have an answer of 
five, whatever units would be given in the problems. We used meters before, so we'll use them again. And more generally, our equation for distance or length of the arc, it's given in lots of ways, would be from the starting point A to the ending point B, where A and B are both times. So that's our initial time. B would be our final time. A couple other things you might be asked are the average speed from t equals negative 1 to t equals 3. Well, if we already had a distance traveled, we could just divide this by the time. 3 minus a negative 2. We're really just dividing that distance by 5 seconds, or 5 units of time. And as a formula, we're just going to add out on front here a b minus a. And that will always give you your average speed. What if we asked, what if, when, if ever, does the object stop? And so as we're looking at the graph, it might be hard to tell if something stops. But one way to think about it is if you were stopped, then your speed must equal zero. And we said the speed was the square root of dx dt squared plus dy dt squared. And so if I had zero for my horizontal rate, but I had one for my vertical rate, this speed would never be zero. It would be the square root of one. So what that means is for you to have be totally stopped, both your horizontal and your vertical rate must be zero. Another way to think about it is if you were moving to the right a little bit and up nothing, you would still have a horizontal rate. Similarly, if you were moving upwards a little but nothing to the right, you would still be moving upward. And so we are going to look for both dx dt, and dy dt to equal zero to be stopped in parametric motion. We'll stop here and we'll have another short video for some of the harder concepts.